Hello everyone, I'm back with a new lecture about monitoring and we're gonna talk today about Prometheus finally. So this is a lecture that's quite anticipated by some of you and I believe that you had some questions about monitoring last time so I will try to make this pretty much simple because uh, we don't want to spend too much time onto something like this because later I'm gonna get back on Prometheus again. So for this lecture we're gonna describe what monitoring is in a little bit smaller detail than previously because we don't need to, to take too much time from your attention and I would like you to get your hands-on uh, experience rather than uh, we just spend time uh, describing stuff. I believe we can uh, mostly find a lot of videos around about uh, what Prometheus is and uh, how it works so I'm not gonna you know fill up your minds too much with the paradigm about this but still we have to cover some of the most important details because some of these things will be on the exam. Um, another thing I would like to mention is that uh, this is not the only way you can do things, of course, like with everything else. I chose Prometheus because this is a tool that gained traction in the last couple of years substantially much. And this is because it started at first as a side project by Google, but uh, Google decided to expand this later and uh, to, you know, push it this in an open source way and now it really became a, a big deal in the industry game so you can find Prometheus being used by a lot of uh, companies and, and businesses out there. Um, Prometheus scale, scales well. Uh, at first it was quite a simple tool but now I can promise you that you can do a lot of granular things with, with it. Uh, the biggest strength of Prometheus is that it's a very nice uh, a unit to use for for monitoring and alerting especially so this is good because um, if you're uh, too busy with your life you have a lot of things on your mind and you're managing uh, loads of servers you don't really want at least not alerts to stack up on your i don't know a telegram messaging uh, app or or discord or whatever you're using so you would really like some sort of automation here as well just like we talked with ansible you just want to put your mind to rest a little bit so you don't have to worry about every single detail and this is exactly where Pro uh, Prometheus comes into into game so you must be asking yourself why Prometheus why, what what's so special about it well first the name I can say because Prometheus was the Titan God in the ancient uh, Greek mythology he was the God that uh, invented fire actually he was the one who who held the fire in his possession so um, then he blamed the gods that they took the fire from him and gave it to the humanity so humanity can use it in, in their own advantage to, you know, uh, become smarter and uh, progress further on. So Prometheus was a god of science and art. So you can imagine how that becomes when uh, you steal knowledge from someone and you gain it, give it to, to everybody else. It was a big uh, scrutiny, etc. So that's why it's interesting how it got the name. But... Uh, as you can see from the logo, that's exactly what we are talking about. So we will talk about something called white box monitoring, and that's what Prometheus does. I will cover the details about uh, black box and white box monitoring. And uh, yes, there are some other lectures you have in Canvas. You will watch this and uh, how monitoring is does uh, it's done in in companies and uh, in some practical aspects. So I'm not going to go into you know separate. Um, sections of this so you just don't get too much confused so i'll just give you uh, specific examples here and after that we're gonna have a second part of the video where we're gonna go practically with uh, some prometheus experience i think that's that's the most important and you will understand uh what it does uh, and why it does so i think um this is a great opportunity to get uh, uh, introduced into the concepts of monitoring but there are other uh, means you can achieve this as well, so you don't have to use Prometheus explicitly. So first, we're going to talk about uh, the monitoring concept. W wh why do we do monitoring in general? Um, I asked the question, what is white box monitoring first, and then we are introducing the black box monitoring. So in order to understand what white box monitoring is, first we need to understand what black box monitoring is, because they're quite similar. And I will start with a simple example. For example, you have a ping request. 
That's one way of monitoring your server. If you have enabled ICMP through your firewall, the moment you ping the, the network, you will realize that the server is up and running. And that's pretty much a good information that you're getting, that your server is alive and you can, you know, log in or it, it just, you assume that it, everything else works. That's the first step. So that's called black box monitoring because you're doing this from outside but in, in general you don't have an idea like whether the web server running on that machine is alive or whether the database is alive etc so that's where the difference is white box monitoring does exactly that it just does the monitoring of the exact stuff that are in the core of the system so it's like uh, the difference between psychology and neuroscience psychology is black box monitoring where you know you can question the subject and you can get information from his responses etc but in the end you don't really know how his depression evolves and whether he has some uh, underlying issue in his psychological well-being and that's exactly where neuroscience comes in so you have to do the tests and get the exact numbers to understand how the brain networks are connected and which regions are failing and what's going on so this is exactly how this differs um I will remove myself from the screen because I believe that uh, it uh, just takes some space here so you can see uh, what's going on. Um, I think that's better. So black box monitoring is just like, like I said, you can imagine it as smoke tests. We do smoke tests for variety of, of things like for example in the aviation industry or even in building PCs sometimes I use smoke tests to test whether the PC has a positive pressure inside or negative pressure so if we achieve positive pressure it means that the system's gonna be well it's not gonna accumulate so much dust and more or less we have good airflow inside the case so that's the initial thing that I can assume that the PC is gonna work well and it's gonna perform good uh, in the long run but that's absolutely no way to know whether the CPU is going to overheat or the GPU is going to be working properly, of course. I mean, you understand the difference. Um, right, so this is uh, something that you can apply in every scenario, whether it's a network or you're working with databases or any, any scenario. So this is the same concept. Uh, but it's not sufficient in order to know certain things if you want to get information about particular stuff that are happening inside your infrastructure you need to get this information from the inside whether it's from some agent or some sort of system that's gonna integrate within your uh, infrastructure and uh, obtain this information in such a way um, however we have use of black box monitoring as well because sometimes we don't really want to to, uh, to implicate too much uh, complexity into our uh, information collection strategy. So this, is, this can be for a variety of reasons, because sometimes you have self-healing systems that you don't care too much whether they're going to live or die, and it's sufficient for you to know how many times it restarted or, or whether uh, a new container was uh, spinned up or something happened. So it doesn't really matter whether the database has, I don't know how many requests or something. It has some auto scaling happening there and uh, doesn't really matter whether it's going to die or not because it's in a cluster, it's uh, replicated. So that's when you can use black box monitoring just to know whether something eventually failed and it got itself fixed. So white box monitoring, it's not something separate. White box monitoring is complementary to black box monitoring. So it means that we use uh, white box monitoring uh, all together with with black box monitoring so it doesn't mean that if we perform uh, let's say monitoring of our cpu temperature on a particular physical host that we don't have to ping that host ever or for example we have a web server running on that host and we are measuring the the cpu temperature let's say again or the utilization of the memory ram etc that doesn't absolutely mean that you don't have to uh, pull some HTTP requests and see how many times that web server is being accessed and whether it's been stressed or something else is happening. That's why we use white box monitoring in conjunction with black box monitoring. So this is like, as I, as I mentioned, as you can see in the third sentence, 
uh, CPU usage is a very common matrix where you can you know correlate that with uh, the HTTP requests and you can realize that the high CPU usage from your uh, host whether it's a virtual machine or it's a container or whatever it's in, into question can be directly correlated with the high HTTP load so if your CPU is uh, usage is going up and your HTTP load is low and uh, you have uh, only a web server on that host then that's something that you would like to investigate that's a good indicator that something else is going on and it would be good to take some things into consideration to resolve it because you don't really want your web server host to become overburdened in terms of cpu resources when it's the only ho a role it has so that's why we combine these two methods uh, as I mentioned before, Prometheus is an older project which evolved slowly and uh, in the beginning it started as um, <laughs> part of SoundCloud, if you can believe that. So it's an op open source project, it's still open source. Again, it's written in Go language as everything else we learned so far. But uh, the official version 1.0 was released in 2016. So that's when I actually uh, used this for the first time. I was rendered uh, crazy when I did some projects with Prometheus. <laughs> it was edu uh, from educational standpoint still, but nobody knew this tool and everybody was like, what's that? Like, why, why are you using this? And I said, well, because I'm using containers and I think this is quite a lightweight and uh, perfect solution to use with containers. And can you imagine everybody's using Prometheus nowadays, especially with container technologies. But that doesn't mean that you can't use Prometheus for anything else. It simply works on every, every possible scenario. You can use it in cloud, you can use it to monitor virtual machines or uh, physical hosts. It doesn't matter. Sometimes I use Prometheus for my own uh, personal computer to monitor some of my... Uh, activities happening in my uh, PC so this is something that's quite convenient and uh, and it works in a lot of occasions and as you can imagine nowadays Prometheus is a very big thing it's it's a big game in the industry and that's why I would like you to get your hands on and grip on Prometheus so you can understand what it does it's not an ultra complicated system, but also it's not simple and light to take. So uh, we'll get to a par practical part to, to see how uh, it performs in practice. So first of all, I would like to get into the philosophy of monitoring. So why, why would you like to monitor something? Of course, you would tell yourself that you want to know whether your hosts are up or uh, your application is working or something but it's not only about that there's a lot um, into into question here so i'll start first with uh, the most simple thing that you can imagine to know when things are uh, going wrong for example so you want to get some sort of message or notification that uh, that something's off and this is where Prometheus uh, comes into play with its alert manager. So that's a, a module in Prometheus which performs alerting. And that's exactly why this is built in such a nice way that if something is off, for example, like a database is down, you're going to get a push notification and that can go to your um, Slack or email. You're going to get a message of some sort. And that's exactly what you can do. There's another way you can, of course, uh, pull information from the Prometheus using uh, a variety of uh, databases. One great uh, option to do this is to stream the metrics obtained from your system into a time series database like InfluxDB or Graphite. And then you can present that on Grafana using dashboards and visualization, you know, to have some uh you know awesome nice looking thing happening on a screen somewhere you know you can uh, stream this 24 7 somewhere you can watch in the in the dashboard if you want I'm, I don't, I'm not sure that's a good way to keep track on things without any alerting but it's still good thing to have you know some uh, type of analysis over time that you can watch in in uh, terms of function happening through the through the period of your monitoring and you can you know sometimes even predict things when they tend to go wrong so uh, a great example is when you have let's say a web application where it's it's doing some particular stuff for particular purpose or like uh, let's imagine a football match uh, you have a 
application that you use on the on uh, on the web. Uh, I mean, people are using your application on the web. It's quite popular, and you get uh, thousands, tens of thousands of requests per minute. Let's say in you know the peak hours. So the problem comes when your application gets so much uh, burdened that it can't feed so many requests. It can't, you know, uh, satisfy the requirement of, of your users and then it will stop misbehaving or it will fail completely. The database will just, you know, it, it's a <laughs> classical denial of service. So uh, what you can do besides, you know, uh, acting on this, you can create some sort of automation here. So you can use these metrics to create some sort of a horizontal auto scaling policy to uh, upscale your uh, infrastructure to accommodate these requests and this is what i will show you with kubernetes in f further lectures when we learn about microservices and service oriented architectures but uh, in general it's not only about uh, making yourself comfortable to know what's going to happen in the future to predict sure you can do that as well but that's where elastic stack comes in a better play with uh, obtaining data from your infrastructure over a particular period of time and you can do later you know aggregation of this data machine learning etc so that's a little bit different methodology but in this case it's more more like live data that you're getting all the time so that's exactly what this is uh, great for uh, you can integrate prometheus with uh, lots of different systems so you don't have to exactly use it as it's described in this uh, figure or uh, or exactly for kubernetes as i mentioned you can use it for for uh, bare metal systems you can use it for you know virtual machines hypervisors etc it doesn't uh, restrict you to to anything so that's uh, that's the beauty of the of the system so first of all is that uh, you can get alerts and uh, you can actually have some sort of uh, peace of mind that things are right or you can act upon specific alerts but also too much alerting can be um, can be problematic so sometimes you know there can be <laughs> alert without any particular problem and uh, I don't know, it can be like a latency affecting users or something. And we can't really do much about that. You know, you just uh, <laughs> it's it's good to know, but still. And uh, what are you going to do about that in that case? You know, it's, you're sleeping and it's 2 a.m. and you're having a great time. You're, you were, I don't know, drunk or whatever. And you're coming home and you're just uh, sleeping and suddenly your system goes crazy. There's uh, loads of alerts. Uh, there is an increased latency in the I don't know network because of whatever reasons and I'm not sure that's gonna be very smart you know especially in that time and uh, there, there there's a way how to handle that so alerts are something that you can configure by yourself depends on your uh, depending on your strategy so uh, this is exactly what we talked that humans are limited in what they can handle so you can't really appease all these uh, requests and demands of everything not the, your users not your systems especially if you're working at scale and if you're like with limited support you're one or two people on a huge infrastructure you lose use a lot of automation and imagine you have to act on everything so if things get, uh, you know, quite messy by alerting you on every little detail, there is something called alert fatigue. You're going to get fed up with that and <laughs> you're not going to act anymore on any alerts. You're just going to consider the alerts as normal thing. And that's not good. That's exactly what you should uh, think about and configure the alerting the way it should be done. So um, this is, as I mentioned, uh, alerting is like on every possible cause a sisyphian task so it's a task that's like it's a repeatable thing it becomes you know a norm but uh it it can be something very serious like for example alerting on a higher latency it's nothing that you need to just jump on but uh, it can indicate something very serious in your network or something else or it can be even somebody else's fault, your, your service providers or even the internet, you know, BGP routes or MPLS uh, routing issues. 
it can be a lot of things so that's why i'm saying that you don't have to get literally alerts on your mobile phone because of every little detail sometimes there's a way you can configure this to be handled automatically to to get some self-organizing in your network and to fix things by itself but uh, also sometimes you would like to leave something to investigate when you have the free time uh, some alerts can be more serious than others and this is what you need to decide by yourself so for example you need to set up alert that uh, if you have high availability database it runs three nodes and two nodes have failed and you have one left i think that's pretty much getting serious no so you have to just uh, at least try to make uh, one of the databases up and running so it can come back in you know um, better state of course you need to set up the cluster to be completely healed so all the three are up and running but you get the point so you don't have to think about whether the latency in the network is affected by google's fault or it's somebody else's fault but i think your database that runs in a cluster of three should be addressed if uh, less than uh you know two nodes at least are up so one for example this is a very rough example i'm giving here one um um um, as I mentioned before, like CPU usage, let's say, it can be quite a thing when it comes to <laughs> particular tasks, but uh, sometimes it can be a false alarm. Let's say, as uh, a host that has a web server starts uh, spinning up more CPU resources, hyperthreading, whatever it's into question, of course, uh, it can be because a lot of HTTP requests but if it's not the case, then um, you will get uh, a notion that something else is happening in the background. Let's say one example is that uh, the logging and the log rotation or there is some sort of uh, cron job happening in the background or some sort of update or something. And suddenly your CPU goes to 100% and you get an alert. It's like 3 a.m suddenly bank cpu usage 100 percent and and you're you're angry and and you just log into the system you think something's going on your web server is uh, like done <laughs> because of that but it's nothing actually it's a temporary situation which just uh resolved by itself and this is like spam literally so <laughs> this is something that you shouldn't do to yourself and the thing is that usually if you do this you will learn to uh, get adapted to this situation and ignore these errors and that's the dangerous part so you should think in advance not to get yourself in such a situation that you have to ignore some of these things um, just don't add up the CPU usage for example to be a problem unless there is some uh, some certain issue that uh, that transpires over a longer period of time if the CPU usage is 100% for I don't know two days or three days and you're you're not getting so much uh, traffic on that uh, web server between i don't know wednesday and friday you can set up such a rule to spin you some sort of alert that okay now it's between wednesday friday this is not the time when we have a lot of traffic it's usually i don't know weekends and the cpu is 100 percent so something's wrong this is exactly how you need to configure your stuff i think it's uh, clear um there's lots of ways things can be uh, done and uh, depends on on the approaches so in terms of um, monitoring usually it can happen that uh, you don't know what's happening inside the infrastructure you have some sort of uh, i don't know application running uh, on top of some hypervisor or something and you're monitoring the physical node and the temperatures of, of your uh, of your components uh, are high and that can be a problem let's say with the cooling system of the data center so this is limited visibility inside your system so if you want to address this you're going to have to access all these operations that are happening inside your servers and uh, provide you know metrics for all of this so um all services they have some sort of internals so these internals are we will learn for example about microservices that's a great example and this is where this type of monitoring is is awesome because it's just uh, integrates with this kind of um, paradigm and works the best because it provides a transparency of the whole thing 
So usually this is great for backends, also for frontends as well. But uh, you have to get some sort of um, integration with these internals in order to know what all these services do. For example, you have a database service, you have some sort of service discovery protocol happening in between. You have, I don't know, uh, a web servers, you have load balancing, you know, proxy termination, SSL, whatever it is. You have to know what's going on in all of these things. And one way to do this is to, you know, get some sort of integration with these internals. So Prometheus is exactly what it does. So it gets uh, agent. You can configure this in a couple of different ways to either stream it directly to the Prometheus server or to get the, to get it to a database in some sort of way. But you need some sort of collection there. So you need uh, not per se a data collection entity, but you need some sort of monitoring agent to be integrated tightly with these internals. So every service will get a monitoring uh, let's call it a daemon, which is not really uh, that, but let's call it a daemon. So it will get some sort of a daemon which uh, will act as a close body and it will, you know, uh, ask question to the particular service. Like uh, all, the, all of these questions are in terms like, so now what? Now what's going on? Now next one second or every two or three seconds or every six seconds you can config configure this by yourself okay so now what's going on how many http requests you have now okay let's give me that information i'm gonna throw it to a database so this agent throws the information to a database and this database handles this in a no sql manner so if you use sql for this it's not going to be optimized because sql is uh, relational database which works in a different way so you need a non-relational database in this case which is great for you know real-time streaming of data and it's called you know time series so time series information processing is something that prometheus excels into um, you can scale that into also as a service like for example this is why we're going to learn in details how it works with the uh, clusters and with Kubernetes. Because you not only that you can monitor the, the hosts, but you can monitor every service that's stacked on top. Because sometimes services can be integrated within other services. And this is exactly what you can do. You can uh, literally pull information from every layer. Um, this is the exact freedom I was telling you about. So if you want to uh, put everything to work outside the box, it's not going to work. Monitoring, it's not about just installing the thing and just you're done with that. It's about yourself. It's like it's like a personal hygiene. It's not just, you know, uh, you get to the to the restroom and do your things and, you know, I don't know, just to wash your face and that's it just because you have to know, but you have to pay attention to, you know, how you shave and what kind of things you do. This is exactly what you need to pay attention for. Like it's it's about uh, what uh, what you want to to get information for. And this is something that doesn't really make a difference whether you know uh, you're gonna create a couple of different profiles for your monitoring uh, solution or you're gonna use ten different tools. It matters uh, that you get a productive uh, alert on which you can act upon in a logical manner. Uh, not something that's going to, you know, wake you up in the middle of the night just because you have a monitoring system and you can brag that it sends you alerts, but it's going to alert you for the exact stuff that, that's going to require your attention, not some stupid things. Um, another thing is that we don't really have a full automation in this uh, aspect. Why is that so? Because if we want to integrate such a system with something more intelligent, we have to think in terms of debugging. So this is something that we need to uh, excel into and we need to find a way how we can automate such a tedious task. Because when you get an alert, you're going to have to investigate it. And one way to do that is to debug, of course. This is, I think, the most difficult and, uh, you know, problematic part of, of this type of work because everything you do will require some sort of troubleshooting uh, uh, every day. Like, I'm, I'm facing uh, problems uh, in, in this world literally every day. And uh, you should come with the notion that 
things just don't work. There is no such place where you will find, you know, a cloud or a system where everything works great. You can imagine Amazon or Google. These people have enormous problems in the back end there. There's, there is a war happening in the data centers. They're fighting bugs and, you know, uh, errors and stuff. So you don't see this because you get uh, uninterrupted service. But trust me, these people are fighting a huge war there and, and it's nasty. So uh, you need to find a way how we can automate this as well, more or less. You don't have to act on every possible, I don't know. Uh, detail like you have problems with the HTTP or something so that's why we have containers you don't have to you know uh, get into the web server and why doesn't it run anymore there is some buffer problem with the memory or something access uh, you don't have direct memory access configured or something it can be anything so in order to avoid technical debt whatever for whatever you're doing you're gonna have to find a way how uh, you can circumvent this in a very smart manner so one way we do this with containers is that we just uh, keep the container and we spin a new one and that's it the process will restart and that's one way how things are you know handled even nowadays you just restart something and it just uh, works because you don't really want to spend time understanding the details why it doesn't and you don't have time for science here because if you want to get into the science thing that's not going to be productive engineering work. We're going to get into experimentation and understanding the details, why the servers fell down, what kind of programming language issue was there. there that's something that other people do. And it's that's why you have bug reporting. And, you know, so uh, in this case, as an engineer, you want to find a way how to address this as fast as possible. So like this i have to say unfortunately um we have some uh aspects that we're gonna cover from uh, that engineering mathematics you've been learning back at school so now it's back i'm not gonna um force you to do anything of this on an exam or uh, to write some sort of code that's gonna explain this you can do it for fun if you have some scientific inclinations but i want to show you where that useless math that so uh, we, we were calling it back at the time including me myself you realize that that's not really useless it's it's very useful actually um so this debugging thing like uh in order to have uh something meaningful from this in a time-based manner you need to know statistics so that's very uh prominent thing in this area so you need to understand how the alerting rules work in prometheus so this is something that exactly you can build upon uh particular uh functions so let's say you want to have a quantile histogram that shows some graph in grafana based on something so you can uh, use that as a sum of the http request rates so you have um http request durations in a bucket so five minutes uh http request so this rate you're gonna take as a sum and you're gonna <laughs> you want to have uh, 0 0.95 uh quantile histogram so that's one way to express this so what does that mean as you can see in a dashboard you can adjust hysteresis you can adjust uh refresh rates let's call them like that so all these functions that you want to know is something that's gonna help you let's say also predict some of the things that are about to happen you don't have to also use this by yourself you can put it in a artificial intelligence system that that's built you know to predict some of these things you can, you can train a deep neural network for that task you don't have to be yourself that's gonna do it but the, the thing is that you need to provide the right data to that neural network in order to predict something successfully otherwise it's just gonna be a huge chunk of uh, of uh, meaningless data you know cluttered in one place and it's not gonna have any meaning it's just gonna be random uh, chaos so yeah that's uh, one way you can do you see there is a uh, cassandra here apache cassandra is also one type of a uh, non-relational database and cassandra is used for um, big data i think it works great with hadoop 
don't get me wrong. I've never tried Hadoop myself, but uh, it's a great tool for using with uh, with big data. So if you're monitoring clusters of servers, or if you have, I don't know, 10 data centers and uh, 15 clouds or whatever, 15 uh, availability zones or, or uh, cloud zones in general, this is something that you can use to, you know, stream huge amounts of data and analyze it, this type of traffic, monitoring of memory, queries to databases, etc. So in general, uh, it's put as a integration part that you can use together with Prometheus. Sure, that's that's a huge possibility and people are doing this in reality. So that's uh, how you can pull some of the metrics back. Um, there's integrations with uh, Java, JMX, Python, etc. that you can uh, uh, put through Prometheus. Uh, to be honest, I haven't tried a lot of these things because there's endless things you can do for this. Uh, but uh, I will show you a couple of examples how you can use it with uh, Graphite, maybe uh, Collect D for sure, because that's integrated part, integral part of uh, InfluxDB, the, the real time database. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do some experiments with this and see how. Uh, how metrics collection works and uh, you know streaming of data in real time uh, you can try to experiment with go and python to write a couple of scripts but uh, we don't have to go so uh, so complicated into detail about this i will show you a couple of examples with uh, monitoring some essential services so metrics are you know good for uh, alerting and also to to give you an initial insight on what's happening so you can try to approach the problem from a different perspective and to debug uh, to troubleshoot so that's not something that's uh, prime in the end so if you really want to uh, find out what the problem is you can't just judge by the by the simple monitoring alert the alert is there just to uh, grab your attention but then you're going to have to look into logs and, you know, uh, take a look into the code of the of the whole thing. I don't know, you have some scripts, you built some scripts, uh, you wrote it in Python or it's some sort of program and it runs on a server, something custom. And you get an alert from Prometheus, something's wrong. So you can't really know what's wrong. Prometheus is not going to tell you what is wrong exactly. That's why we have this difference between logging and monitoring. So you're going to have to take a peek into the logs and see what went wrong at which point. Um, right, so uh, it's not just a straightforward solution that you're going to just implement for resolving one issue just as it is. You're going to have to combine this with, with uh, logging and with other strategies if you can. So that's uh, that's that's the difference between you know logging and monitoring because uh, monitoring doesn't exactly tell you everything it depends on the situation of course but in general logs are something that your computer is programmed to speak to tell you what's wrong his pain and his his troubles so this is how you should do your uh, debugging process you're gonna collect metrics from your system. And you're gonna have some profiling strategy, so you will just combine that together with the logs. Without logs, you will not be able to know what's going on in the code. It's simple as that. Uh, you can get uh, monitoring problem of some issue, of some issue, particular issue with the program. There is a lot of. Uh, uh disk utilization something's happening with the you know with the writing on the disk not necessarily that's a disk problem so the moment you get this kind of uh, alert in prometheus you're gonna jump and you're gonna start troubleshooting the ceph cluster let's say for block storage or whatever you're using and that may not be the cause it may be your application actually trying to do lots of writes and that's maybe something that shouldn't happen and this is exactly where you're gonna have uh information about this in the logs so if you check the logs they will tell you oh the application was trying to write on this disk location for the last i don't know 12 hours but it was unsuccessful because uh, the disk is not working or something's happening so that's that's the idea you can't judge by one thing you have to combine this so 
trending and reporting what's that so alerting and debugging is like uh, what you're gonna do when something transpires but trending is something that you're gonna have to know that can happen again and over and again and uh, repeatedly so you can have an insight of the things going on within your application or infrastructure in general over a longer period of time so that's something that that's with quite usual with you know repeated repeatedly used used tasks like caching or the 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 http or if you know somebody's trying to to do something uh you know that's not uh, common in your in your infrastructure let's say i can't give you exact example here but uh uh if, yeah i think yeah how is cache hit rate changing over time that's that's also one of the examples I could imagine at the moment because cache is something that you would like to do if you have a lot of traffic on your web servers so HTTP caching is a very common technique um, and this is something that's that's good to know how it's happening over longer periods periods of time so uh, you should know how to, to redistribute this type of data where it's stored do you have to use SSDs or do you have to use NVMe disks etc so this is something that you will you know have uh, an insight with uh, with the concept of trending and then uh, you can judge based on the on the particular situation but uh, prometheus can go even beyond this in the analysis that's the beauty of the tool it's very flexible modular and it allows you to observe particular um, moments and uh, and situations from a lot of different angles and aspects um, why is that so? Prometheus offers you a specific query language. It has uh, it has a way how we can do lots of filtering and querying in terms of you know uh, the data that you're collecting from the infrastructure. So you can combine this in lots of different ways to get the information that you want. As I mentioned before, HTTP requests with uh, top five users of cpu whatever that that is like you have a web server from one user you have a database server from another user etc and you can combine this uh, metrics in order to judge over a particular period of time how the trend is going to happen when your website or web application is being used because it's going to be something that's accessing a sql database or something and then uh, the web server as well how many people are connecting etc so that's one example how we can do this or what's the 95th percentile lat latency in each data center over the f over the past month so if you want to be concerned with the network latency you can do that you can monitor your switches so you can do a lot of things uh, the idea is that you can plot this and you can evaluate based based on the graphing uh, so the way you set up the the the, um, the queries that's what you're gonna get as a representation you can multiply add join aggregate you know predict etc you can do a lot of things with uh, with uh, different queries and that's what prometheus is great he has a specific query language we will get into that in the practical part so um for example I will show you also some examples when we learn about uh, um, microservices and service-oriented architectures, about containers and uh, how you can uh, monitor containers with uh, Prometheus. It's pretty much uh, simple. You don't have to uh, create any complex um, structures of monitoring. So Prometheus has also lots of uh, good ways how you can do that. So this is just an example, let's say, how you can... Uh, monitor and represent the top five uh, docker images used that, that are using your cpu by uh, the most uh, towards the least um, there are labels you can use to um, to represent your data so prometheus is not using uh, uh, dotted strings like we were doing this with uh, with terraform it's still based on Go language, but it doesn't do that. That's a typical um, uh, characteristic of the Go language, but uh, it has a little bit different 
labeling structure. So this multidimensional labeling is more like as it's represented here in this example. You have a metric which is like saying that there is an event happening and in a particular city. So you can uh, you can do this like it, it reminds sort of on a JSON format like you can have keys and values etc uh, you can aggregate cut slice through this there's operations you can perform etc uh, right so there's something that I didn't mention before it's called node exporter node exporter is a small plugin that Prometheus is using to obtain information from the node so as the name suggests it exports literally information from the node and it gives it to prometheus for processing so the node exporter take it can it can take different metrics from the system like in this case um the instance ip address the the job what, what it is uh, assigned for and the device where it's monitoring for example here it's monitoring on the docker zero interface or the physical ethernet interface or the loop back etc so this is something that you can uh, assign as a metric to uh, get um, knowledge about how many packets uh, or bytes are received at a particular interface from at this particular address so this is something that you can um, uh, call it as a value from the element that you want to filter um, there is a way you can uh, implement the python instrumentation for example if you want uh, you can install the Prometheus client and you can query that for example in uh, in this way as it's represented in in uh, in this example so um, right you can summarize a uh, request duration of particular service uh, HTTP server so uh, you can take the the summary of all the requests duration in seconds not just how many requests but how how many seconds a particular request uh, is uh, is happening and this can tell you a lot of information about your caching whether it works well or not so that's that's just one small example using python and it's pretty simple so that's why i encourage people to get to python for this it's a very a convenient language for doing you know experiments in this in this area um right there is a way you can add dimensions uh right it's uh it's something that uh, that um, that you can uh let's say for example you have um prometheus client uh to to import a specific counter in the uh, with the prometheus client so you can say how many uh requests are total requests and you uh you put a specific method here so this method can be you know a function that you can call and uh, that that can be like a specific handler that you're going to use to process these requests to count how many requests are coming etc so this can be used as a uh, input to something else like uh, like your horizontal um, auto scaling uh, policy or or whatever you're using and uh, based on how many requests are happening you can auto scale your infrastructure that way so that's just a small small uh, petty example uh, right so you can use uh, labels and annotations uh with uh, kubernetes that's uh, i'm not sure we're gonna have time to you know show everything of this in practice and it can be too much for you but uh, i can encourage you that you try some of these things by yourselves and get a grip on uh, what uh, what these things do i'm not sure i'm gonna have the time myself to give you all these uh, examples in such a short uh, period but i will try as much as possible to introduce you to these things so you can uh, you can know at least that they exist and uh, in the future you can refer to this if you need something similar uh there is a concept of plumbing so <laughs> it's like um you know uh, 
it's not just we're not just talking about a tool here we're talking about a, a way of thinking so it's not just you know um doing stuff because uh, something has to be done but it's you know getting yourself accustomed to some way that uh, that makes things easier for yourself not just you know uh, trying to to act upon something because you have to because things are right that way but it's about making yourself more comfortable for what you do uh, about uh, about your infrastructure this is why uh, monitoring exists not to make your uh, life harder and uh, to give you lots of headaches or you know to make you do the right thing and to make the right moves but to make you think in the right direction that that you don't have to jump whenever there is something burning you, you just have to understand that sometimes the fire can extinguish itself so you don't have to do everything you know on every little detail so um uh, we can summarize in this that the key things uh, um, Prometheus is encouraging you to, to build is to um, alert on specific symptoms in your infrastructure, let's say, let's call them like that, because uh, this is a typical uh, uh, way of understanding stuff. You can't know exactly what's happening in a particular server or a specific container or whatever it's into question, but you can understand roughly when you see the symptoms. So sometimes when you ask me questions about particular errors, I don't know what it is about. I don't know what exactly is the issue until I, you know, spend some longer time to investigate into it, to try to reproduce it or to try even to, you know, look into the system directly. But I can assume approximately what it what it inclinates towards, what 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 it's the insinuation of the whole thing. So this is exactly what you want from from the alerting. Alerting is not going to tell you that okay, we have a this kind of problem no it's gonna tell you that we have a problem we need your attention and that's it so dashboards are something that's very useful we saw that with uh, with elastic stack and kibana that you really want to have something uh, nice that's gonna you know show you how things are happening in uh, in reality um that's easier to do rather than to look through code because if you just look through the prometheus code it can get really confusing and one way to you know um, rectify this is to represent things on a dashboard and you can judge approximately when and how things can go wrong so we have a comprehensive monitoring solution for the cloud and we can see the Grafana dashboard and we can know exactly which service is misbehaving and what is wrong. Sometimes, you know, you're going to have a difference in a message b between OK and not OK. You can have different levels of, uh, of you know, debugging or errors. Like, for example, you have a level of uh, warning or error or just like in logging. So you can push all this information through Prometheus into, into Grafana on a dashboard and you can observe this while you're working or you have a monitor that's, you know, running all the time in your home or at work and you can just take a peek into it and see if something's going wrong. Or you can just zoom into the, the dashboard and you can um, take a look into each separate function and see something that's happening over time in the last seven days when things went wrong which day it's most likely that the things go wrong which period of the year etc so this is why you would like to have dashboards so you can you know um have an intuition where to focus mostly on on the particular problem so another thing that you want is to have the ability to run more complex queries so you can uh, pinpoint exact problems and uh, you can use the data for something else later, either for uh, particular machine learning purposes, where you can have some sort of uh, automation on top of all of that, or you can pull that same data for the purpose of auto scaling, as I mentioned in the example. That's a great example. I will show you how to do this with uh, Kubernetes because it has a great way how to do horizontal auto scaling based on metrics obtained from the infrastructure. Uh, you could do that with Ansible and Terraform. It's a little bit more complex with Puppet as well. 
but we didn't get to that part because that's a little bit more complicated to to achieve with configuration management rather than microservices that's that's something that we're going to discuss later what's the difference between configuration management and you know service oriented architectures etc another thing that we learned is that prometheus is uh, uh, great to enable you ease of integration points for other systems exactly this so you don't have to use prometheus with uh, a database like that or you don't even have to use it with grafana you can use something else you, you don't even have to use prometheus at all you can use some some sort of different uh, monitoring system that's going to collect data like i don't know collect d or uh, or uh, like like uh, elastic stack is using packet bit or you know metric bit or you can use even wireshark you know to get uh, particular network uh, segments like in my example i'm using uh, wireshark to get information about 5g networks so there is no other way you can uh, dissect specific uh, networking segments like control plane from user plane traffic etc so in that case you're gonna have to use some tool that's able you know to uh, to slice through the data in a very very fine manner and then you can do something with that data either you can send it for you know querying uh, split it like logstash does uh, aggregation of logs you can do this further with prometheus like uh, like we did uh, back with uh, within the elastic stack so this is something that that uh, you learn how to do in the next video we will show um, how you can do this in practice i'll try to cover um, a lot of these things in uh, in one example although i'm not going to be able to cover everything i'm going to tell you which parts you should uh, focus more on and which parts are you know less uh, likely to to be used for you for for your use case but in general this doesn't have any limitations so uh, we can have a demo as well on week 11 with docker and kubernetes i will show you that but uh, i will explain you as well how you can manually install prometheus which is something that's not usually done in practice so often there are um, ways how you can automate this deployment you can try this with puppet as well i can show you how to do it with ansible i mean if you know how to install it manually and how to configure prometheus which is quite straightforward I think you will be able to do this in any other way. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video and this uh, lecture. If you have any questions, just please reach me out. And I will strongly suggest that you take a look at the Prometheus documentation website provided in the link here. They have very, very detailed documentation and uh, there's a lot of things you can learn from there. So most of this information that you've seen in these lectures is from there because I can't invent all of these things. I have to take them from somewhere. So the first uh, places where I refer to are the official documentation sites. So please take a look at these. And if you have anything to, to ask, it's the best if we discuss it together and, uh, you know, we're going to find a solution for a problem that you encounter. In general, I will uh, provide the next video as soon as possible. So uh, we will see you next time in the next lecture.